So today's video is going to cover how to mod your PS3 with just a USB stick and an internet connection. Now this covers your later versions of PS3s. If you got an earlier version, check out my other video. So look at the back of your PS3 and if it's a model CECH2500 or a CECH3000 or a CECH4200, then this video is for you. If not, again, check out my other video and you could mod your PS3 that way. Now, we're going to start off with going to the PS3 exploit webpage and we're going to download a hybrid firmware. This isn't exactly a custom firmware, but it makes installing the PS3 exploit a little bit easier. So, since your PS3 is a later version, we're not going to be able to install a custom firmware like Rebug which if you have an earlier version of PS3, again, check out my other video and I'll show you how to install Rebug custom firmware, which you can see on this webpage here. So if you've got the later version of PS3, you are gonna be able to run Homebrew, but you're not gonna be able to have all the features that Rebug has here. So we're gonna to go to the Brewology webpage and download all the homebrew apps that we're going to want to run which we're going to start off with downloading webman mod which is a backup game launcher which sort of installs on your on-screen menu we're going to download all the other package files which are add-on features to webman which some of them run with the exploit that we're going to install which is called hen There's a few apps and a few different themes. I wouldn't bother with downloading any of the themes if I were you. You could test those out later on down the road. Once you've downloaded pretty much all the files except for the themes on the page, we could go down to RetroArch, which is a collection of emulators that run on the PS3. It also works with the Webman mod to run your ROMs straight from the on-screen menu. And then finally we're going to download Multiman which is another backup manager and it's also can be used to dump games onto your hard drive if you got a PS3 Slim. If you got a PS3 Super Slim or the 4200 model then you're going to have to use a USB stick to dump your games. So RetroArch is pretty big, so it's going to take a while to download. And for whatever reason, it's causing an error. So I'm going to try to restart it. And if that doesn't work, I'm just going to re-download the file. Now on my other video, I showed you how to update your PS3 to Sony's latest firmware by using the internet connection on your PS3. But this video, I'm going to show you how to do it from a USB stick. So what you're going to have to do is download the official firmware from Sony's website, which should be 4.86. So this should take a couple minutes to download. And again, we're still waiting for RetroArch to finish. But once that's completed, you should plug in your USB stick and we're going to transfer all the files over to it. So you're going to make sure that your USB stick is formatted to FAT32 and if you can, 32 kilobyte cluster size. Make sure when you format, if you need to, that you're formatting your USB stick and that if you got any files on there, that you got them backed up. Then we're going to create a file a folder called PS3 and then inside that folder, we're going to create another folder called Update, all in capital letters. Then we're going to copy over all the files that we downloaded to our USB stick. Again, depending on your computer and the type of USB stick, this could take a few minutes. We're then going to transfer over the Sony update file to the PS3 folder and then transfer that to the update folder. We're also going to set up the hybrid firmware. So we're going to transfer that into our PS3 folder, which is pretty much extracting just that into our 
We're also going to download an MD5 checker because when you do an update with custom firmware onto your PS3, you want to make sure that you got a not corrupted file just in case or else you might break your PS3. If you break your PS3, you're going to have to download or you're going to have to buy a hardware flasher to restore it, which in most cases it's easier just to buy a new PS3 and cheaper. So once you've downloaded an MD5 checker, extract it and open up the program. And usually you just drag and drop whatever file you want to check to MD5. So we're going to drag and drop the hybrid firmware. And in the folder that, or file that you downloaded, there's a folder. The name of that folder is the MD5 that the file should be. So check it with the checker, and if it's the same, then you're good. So now our USB stick is set up. So we're going to update our PS3 using USB. So plug that into your PS3 in the USB port closest to the DVD drive. Then go over to settings and go to system update. And you're going to want to select update from storage media say yes to all the prompts and depending on your PS3 this could take a few minutes and once it's complete it should just restart. We're then going to go to our PS3, we're going to rename the update file that we downloaded from Sony. I usually just add the version number, so Sony 4.86 and we're going to rename the hybrid firmware to PS3 update. Now we're going to plug that into our PS3 and we're going to update it again from storage media. And you can see it was hybrid firmware. This will take the same time to update, so sit back and relax. And then once this complete, we're going to then set up our web browser. So what you should do is I usually create a new user and then you got to go to your web browser. Well, you should make sure that you're connected to the internet as well. So you can do this through Wi-Fi, but it's recommended that you do it through a LAN connection. But I'm going to show you that you could do it through a Wi-Fi. So I'm going to connect to my Wi-Fi. Type in the password pretty quick. And there we go. Now if you have a lot of devices connected to your Wi-Fi, it's probably not going to work. I was having issues when my kids were all on it this afternoon. So then you're going to go to the web browser and you're going to clear the catch, the search history, and the cookies. Then you're going to set your home page to blank and exit the browser and enter back in. You're then going to want to search for the PS3 exploit. Exploit is spelled without the E. This is just going to search Google and then ps3exploit.com is the site you want to go. You're then going to go on to go to the hen and then I use the alternative installer. So the initializing can take a few minutes and it doesn't work every time. For this PS3 it took about five attempts for me to do it and I was just about to give up on Wi-Fi and connect it through LAN. So as you see it didn't work so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the home page to ps3exploit.com and I'm going to delete the catch, search history and cookies again and restart my PlayStation. It could be frustrating modding the later versions of the PS3s because 
usually doesn't work on the first try. So we're going to go back to the new user, go back to the internet browser, should go to our new home page, and we're going to try the hen alternative installer again. This time it worked. So now you're going to want to close the browser and go to remote play and close right away. Then you got a new option, hen. You want to install and download and install. So once this finishes, you're going to want to restart your PS3 and then you're going to have a new button that you're able to play, press, which will allow you to play homebrew. If you do not enable the hen, you will not be able to play homebrew. So that's the one downside. Well, there's a few downsides of modding later versions of PS3s, but this is the main one besides not being able to install custom firmware. So as you see, once the PS3 is restarted, you have to enable hen, and then we're gonna be able to install all our homebrew. So we're gonna go to install packages, you want to go to standard, and if you press triangle, you're able to install all the files at once. So, RetroArch always takes a few minutes to install, but once everything is complete, you should see a whole bunch of new options on your PS3 menu. So now that it's complete, you're going to want to also install the Webman mod. So when you install webman mod, you have to hold down L1 and then press X. Keep holding down L1 until your PS3 is completely restarted. So now with webman mod, it's going to engage every time you enable hen. So we're going to enable hen and we should see in the top right corner that webman mod is also enabled. And there we go. So now webman mod is where you want to play all your games, which you can also do through Multiman. So we're also going to finish the installation of Multiman by just clicking Multiman. So this video covers just how to mod your PS3. The next video covers how to set up webman mod and other backup managers. So if this video helped you out, like and subscribe and watch the next video to complete your setup.